If you had so many plans this new year of looking different, being different, succeeding at your goals, and you are nowhere near where you thought you should be, you need to make some changes. This one month challenge is going to force you to hyper fixate on bettering yourself, succeeding, and becoming unrecognizable. I'm going to give you seven tips to give you a transformative month that's going to change your life significantly. We are going to do a one month challenge with each other. I'm going to be your accountability partner, and this is a foolproof plan of how to succeed at your goal. When I set really big goals for myself, like getting my house, growing my social media, becoming healthier, I did this one month challenge and I was successful every single time. Keep in mind that you have to make sacrifices for your goals. You have to cut some people off that are not good for you. You have to hyper fixate. You can't be scattered. You can't be everywhere. You really need to limit procrastination and cutting out anything that is not good for you. You can't be lazy or bullshit your goals because you are trying to transform your life, aren't you? You need to get up and you need to take action. If you want to be an exceptional person, you have to do things that are out of the ordinary and you have to do things that other people aren't doing because I guarantee you, not everybody is taking one month, a one month challenge to focus on themselves and to grow into a better person. A lot of people are scattered. A lot of people are lazy and that's the sad truth. So like I said, if you want to be exceptional, you can't be like other people. It's time to become savage. It's time to focus on yourself. It's time to put yourself first. And I'm going to give you seven tips on how to do that. Hello, I'm and I create content on inspiring you to become a better version of yourself. I also have a playlist that you need to check out after this video on the best advice and glow up tips that you need in your life. One of the things I've noticed is when I tunnel vision on one overarching goal, I achieve it so much faster. I am notorious for doing 100 day challenges. But right now I am doing a 100 day challenge where I'm reading for 30 minutes every single day for 100 days. I do random challenges like this throughout the year because it teaches me discipline and it keeps me on track. Whenever I find that I'm overindulging on something, I pull back. Like I found I was overindulging in TV. I pulled back and I was like, I need to read more. I need to limit my screen time. I'm saying that to say it is super important to focus on one thing that you find yourself abusing, you find yourself indulging in, that you need to cut out so you can replace it with a goal that you need to put all your focus into. For this one month challenge, I don't want you to pick too many things to focus on. Don't scatter yourself and pick 10 different things that you wanna juggle. You wanna pick one thing thing that you feel is most important to you. When you pick so many things to scatter and juggle, this is how nothing gets accomplished and you will go nowhere fast. You will just juggle everything and make a little bit of progress at everything when in turn you could pick one thing that you can succeed at exceptionally and then achieve your other goals in different months at different paces. This could be creating a new side income that's lucrative, doing a diet challenge, reading a book for 30 days, leveling up your appearance, anything that you feel like is a big goal of yours that you want to accomplish in one month. If you don't know what your biggest goal is that you feel like you can actually achieve in one month, you need to ask yourself, what is a big goal that I had for this new year that I need to refocus on and revisit? For me, it's definitely getting my savings account back up. So my goal would be, I want to add an additional $10,000 in my savings account. So I'm going to be more frugal this month. I'm going to save as much as possible. I'm gonna cut out eating out. You need to create a strategy strategy and you need to create a consistency plan for you to actually achieve this goal. I have never achieved any of my really big goals without consistency. Consistency has gotten me everything in life. And this doesn't mean that you have to be super strict with yourself. Let's say you're doing a diet plan. This doesn't mean you don't get any junk food, that you have to eat perfectly every single day, that you have to work out every day. That's not what this means. Have a cheat day. And on the other days you focus on your diet or you focus on working out. So you could have a cheat day that's Friday, Saturday, day, any day that you like to go out, create a plan like this for yourself to where you are still implementing some fun for yourself, but you are also still staying super disciplined and consistent. And this is the reason why I love this challenge. A lot of people need other people to tell them what to do. When you're somebody who has discipline within yourself and you can self motivate, that is a superpower and a skill that you can develop with challenges like these. And this challenge is so important because it will not only help you achieve your goals, it will also spill into different areas of your life, you will find that you are just becoming a more disciplined person. You are no longer as lazy. You are no longer willy nilly on your stuff. You are extremely serious and determined to get things done. Don't share your goals with other people. I know that it can feel really tempting, especially to people who you're really close with. I would say that if you have somebody you really trust, like a very close best friend, boyfriend, husband, things like that, you can give them an overall idea, but don't go into super detail with 
with these people with what you're trying to achieve. If you're serious about achieving something, keep your mouth shut until it's done. When you talk about it, you will feel like you've already done it. And this is literally the opposite of what we're trying to do. It is time to train yourself to not talk about anything that you are going to accomplish until it's done. How do you react to somebody when they're telling you about their goals versus when they tell you they've achieved their big goals? You have more respect for somebody who tells you they've achieved this big goal. Honestly, it's really nobody's business what you have going on. Even if it's somebody super close to you, you can tell somebody you love, oh, I'm taking a month to focus on something that's super important to me. I have this really big goal that I wanna accomplish. I have this goal that's very serious to me. So I'm sorry if I'm pulling back a little bit. You don't wanna ghost people. You wanna be mature about it. You wanna tell them, hey, I'm taking a month to really focus on myself, achieve my goals. I'm super serious about this, so I'm sorry if you don't really hear from me. Be mature about it, but you don't have to necessarily go into detail about what you have going on. Not everybody is really your friend, and it's a hard thing to hear. I've had experiences where I felt like people took my ideas. I've had experiences where I felt that I saw people trying to copy me. Not everything comes from an ill intention. Some people are genuinely inspired by you, but at the same time, this is why you wanna keep it shut and you wanna accomplish it because it gives you a better feeling about yourself and you don't feel like you're competing with somebody. You have no idea about what other people are thinking about you when you tell them about your goals. People have limited beliefs that can affect you and that can affect your perception on your goal and whether or not you can achieve it. I remember one time I told a really good friend of mine that I wanted to reach 500,000 followers on TikTok. She had a really shocked face and she was like, oh, are you sure you can do that? That's a lot of work. Do you think you can do that? I don't know. Almost doubting. I know that it wasn't a bad intention because we're still friends to this day, but it was more so like she felt like for her, it would be difficult. She projected it on me thinking, it would be difficult for me. Yes, it was difficult for me. I had to post a lot. I had to work my butt off, but I did it because I was consistent and I was serious about it. And I wasn't going to let difficulty stop me from where I needed to be. This is something that if I were a different person, I was more sensitive. I was more emotional. I'm a healthily emotional person, but if I was more reactive and angry and insecure about myself, I would get mad about that. I would be like, what do you mean? Do you think I can't do it? I would get in my feelings about it and I would not apply myself because I would feel like it's too high. This is too high of a goal. She's saying she can't do it. She's saying that it's a really big goal. I'm not that type of person. And I was like, for you, you think it's difficult and it could be difficult for me, but I'm still going to achieve it. And a year later, I was able to achieve it. I did achieve 500,000 followers on TikTok. I do regret telling her this, not because of her reaction or anything like that, more so because there's power in moving in silence. There's power in going into hermit mode Mode, focusing on your goals and becoming a new unrecognizable person when you come outside again. There is really power that you have being that type of woman that people will look at and take you more serious. People take you more serious when you take yourself more seriously. People will not believe that you can do something until you show them that you could do it. With that being said, you probably do want to limit some access to people during this time. This doesn't mean cutting everybody off, going ghost, never talking. No. If you find yourself talking on the phone every day for four hours with your best friend, it's time to cut that down. If you find yourself texting your boyfriend all day, it's time to cut that down. There are so many distractions in this world that we need to cut out if we want to be exceptional, unrecognizable women, right? You cannot move the same that you were moving before because if you are watching this video, you have a goal that you have yet to achieve. And that means that you need to make changes in your life. You are overindulging in something that you need to start letting go or you need to start limiting. This is not a forever thing. This is a thing that you need to do for your future self. Because when you do this now, your future self will be so grateful that you took the time to be selfish in a healthy way. You took the time to build yourself, work on yourself, work towards something that you told yourself you are going to do a while ago when you write things down when you make goals when you make vision boards and you break those promises and you don't achieve any of them that's almost like breaking a promise with yourself imagine that's like you're in a relationship and you told your boyfriend not to follow IG models and you go through his following and you see that he did. Imagine it like that. You should be that heartbroken towards yourself when you go back into your vision board and you're like, I didn't do any of this. I didn't accomplish any of this. What am I doing? I need to make changes. I need to be serious. I need to cut things out. Once you take 
take relationships with other people as seriously as you take a relationship with yourself, that's when you will start to see things change. It is time to detox your brain. This is going to be a hard one. I want you to grab your journal and write down everything negative that you consume, everything negative that you do on one side of the paper. And on the opposite side, you want to write down everything positive that you do, everything positive that you implement in your life. Now, the goal is to have the negative lower than the positive. If you have the positive longer, you're already on a really good track. But if you have the negative longer, there are a lot of things that we need to cut out and we're going to do it together. So it is time to become savage in this very moment. What are a few things from this list that you can cut out this month? Inherently, we are all positive and negative beings, right? We all have bad and we all have good within us. You're overindulging in insulting people, insulting yourself, negative thought forms, seeing people you shouldn't see, talking to people who are very negative for you, bad influence from bad friends. But you want to try as much as possible to find limits and to find boundaries for these things. With that being said, here are some common habits to give you an idea of negative things that you should cut out or limit in your life. Too much social media can be something that is very distracting distracting that people don't realize how bad is for your brain and your mental health. Social media is such a big distraction into why people do not achieve their goals. When you're following people that are achieving all these things, or you're following somebody that you genuinely like, like IG people, YouTube people, that you are genuinely proud of for achieving certain things, sometimes you can feel like you've achieved that yourself. But are you happy for them or do you want to achieve that yourself? You need to set time throughout the day specifically to check your social media. As soon as I wake up, I do not touch my phone. I brush my teeth for two minutes. I do my entire skincare routine and then I grab my phone and check it. I don't wake up and check my phone immediately. This is such a good way to find discipline in your morning routine. Start practicing mindfulness. This is so important if you find that you have anxiety or you overthink. Spend five to 10 minutes a day, every single day to do some meditation. You spend more than 10 minutes scrolling on your phone so you can find time for meditation. Meditation literally changed my life. I can do a whole entire video on mindfulness and meditation and detachment. I don't like the word detach because there's a negative connotation, but I would describe myself as more unbothered. I give that all to meditation. I give it to my meditation practice. I do 30 minutes every day. I'm very serious about my meditation. I go on retreats for it. and. The the reason why I am so emotionally balanced and unbothered is because of my meditation. Clean up your mental space. Keep a journal every single day to rant all your worries, all your insecurities, all your feelings throughout the day. This will help to keep your mind clutter free and reduce anxiety. Sometimes we can feel like a situation is way bigger than what it is, but when we journal about it and we get it all out in a journal and we give it a day to look back in the journal and read it, we realize, hmm, maybe I was being extra maybe it was not that serious, you gain a new perspective on the matter. It's also important to replace ranting, insulting, calling your friend, talking shit about other people with journaling. Not everything that's in your brain needs to be said out loud. Another great way to combat negative self-speech is to create post-it notes for yourself. When I was going through a really tough time, I was in a really toxic dynamic with this guy. My self-esteem was so low, you guys. Like I have never seen myself so insecure. So what I did was I created post-it notes and I wrote positive affirmations on it and I put it on my mirror. So every single day for like a month, I read it out loud and it genuinely really helped me. Replace TV, Netflix, streaming services with podcasts and books. I'm on a 100 day challenge right now where I'm reading every single day for 30 minutes a day. Change my life. Not only does it help to expand your vocabulary, you don't have brain fog throughout the day, you don't have exhaust throughout the day anymore because you are not consuming so much TV, so many streaming services, scrolling online all day. When I would binge TV, it would make me so lazy, you guys. I would literally just lay in my bed and just binge TV, binge Netflix. I would just complain to my friends, oh my gosh, I can't find a good show. Yeah, you can't find a good show because you should be reading a new book. Another thing that really helped to expand my vocabulary is podcasts. I love a really good podcast. I love the self-love fix. That really helped me when I was in a really tough time. I think it's like 
perfect for women if you're going through a hard time with insecurity, dating, romance, it's really good. There are some really good podcasts that I'm going to list down below that keep me more positive and keep me motivated. Allocate specific times of the day where you listen to your podcast and when you read your books. You could do this during your commute, working out, or right before bedtime. Every single morning, I go on a walk for 30 minutes and this is when I listen to my podcast. I also listen to podcasts sometimes when I'm in the car. And for reading my book, I do it 30 minutes before bed. I have a notes app where I write down everything that stuck out to me in a podcast or a book. I feel like anything that you remember, anything that you think of over and over again is a sign or a message for you. So this morning I was listening to a podcast and this woman said two things that stuck out to me that I wrote in my notes app today. I wrote down, the more people you know in every room, the less you feel like an imposter. Doors have to close for doors to open. And I loved both of those sayings. I felt like they stuck out to me. Think about how you can apply these lessons in your own life because what you consume become your inner thoughts and your inner world. Because if you're consuming a lot of negativity, you're only consuming entertainment, you're only consuming things that release dopamine in your brain constantly over and over again, you are not living a healthy life. You need to make room for consuming things that not only make you feel relieved, relaxed, entertained, but also things that make you feel motivated, disciplined, productive, like you're making strides towards your goals, like you're learning something new. Physically glowing up is so important to keep up your momentum during this month. There are so many things this month that are absolutely so important for you to do so you keep your energy high. You wanna make sure your diet is clean, make sure you're eating healthy food, make sure you're drinking your water throughout the day, stay hydrated, add lean proteins, whole grains into your meals, make sure that you're eating throughout the day, that you're not skipping meals, limit your snacking and limit junk food. You're gonna need a lot of energy this month to actually make strides towards your goals. I exercise every single morning. I even go to yoga sculpt sometimes and that helps me feel so much more motivated throughout the day with my to-do list. Every single morning, I write down a to-do list of everything that I need to get done in order of most important to least important. And I find that when I don't exercise, when I don't go to my yoga sculpt class, when I don't go to bar class, I feel more lazy. I will be on my bed and I will watch YouTube videos all day, I promise you. So I take 30 minutes every single morning to go on a walk either around my neighborhood or on a trail. You could get a yoga mat, do it on your floor, put YouTube on, put on somebody's yoga class. There are so many really good beginner workout videos on here. Then you wanna develop a really good dental hygiene routine. When you're not taking care of your teeth, it affects your mental health, it really does. If having bad dental hygiene can affect your heart health, it can affect your mental health. So make sure that you're flossing every day, one to two times a day. Make sure you're brushing your teeth two minutes a day. Use a mouthwash and use a tongue scraper. Brush your teeth twice a day. Every single morning, like I said, before I check my phone, I do my skincare routine. I do my cleanser, my moisturizer, and my sunscreen. This also makes me feel ready to tackle the day. You also want to do a night skincare routine, which I do my tretinoin and I do my anti-wrinkle cream. The goal is to create systems and routines to take care of your physical health because looking good will make you feel good. It will make you feel more motivated, more energized, and ready to actually achieve all of your goals that you wrote down. You genuinely feel like you could do more things throughout the day when you look good. At least for me, when I wake up and I do my hair and I do my skincare and I look good, I put on a cute outfit, I feel more motivated. It is time to conduct a life audit and to create a new vision board. I definitely have to create a new vision board this year. I looked back at my vision board in the beginning of this year and I just found that a lot of the things I did not even want anymore and a lot of the things I didn't accomplish, but that was because I changed my goals. I wanted new things for myself. I did not want to be the same person that I wanted to be at the beginning of the year. I love to go on Canva and to just create a digital vision board and I put it on the background of my desktop, put it as the wallpaper of my iPhone. I just love doing this because every day you get on your laptop, you will see these goals at the back of your screen and there's no excuse for you not to achieve them because you look at your goal every single day. So I want you to go back to your old vision board, see what you wanna keep for the rest of the year, see what you wanna take out and think about what you wanna add onto your vision board. So if you want your one month challenge 
challenge to be about saving ten thousand more dollars for your savings account you want to probably make it the biggest thing to stick out on your vision board use super bright colors get on pinterest look at some inspo pictures and start following people on social media that you feel like are aligned with these goals look at your life where it is right now at a wide perspective think about where you were this time last year are you in the same exact place does that make you happy does that make you sad does that make you uneasy i feel like i want to grow in some way shape or form every single year whether that's emotionally whether that's mentally or physically i want to be in a better place every single year so i want you to take your journal out and evaluate different areas of your life evaluate your career relationships your health and your personal growth identify what's working really well and what you need to improve so even though we're creating a life audit on our entire lives, this is still going to help us figure out what we want our big overarching goal to be and how we can achieve that based on our answers. It will also give you a really good and clear idea of what you want next month's challenge to be. You want to create SMART goals for yourself. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. So when you set a specific goal, you are very narrow with what you want to do. And that's what we're doing this month and what I told you to do at the beginning of this video. Be very specific and narrow on exactly what you want to do. Pick one thing, maybe two, but I suggest doing one overarching thing. Then you want to pick something that's measurable. So this is something that you can actually measure. So a number amount. So if you want to lose weight, you say you want to lose five pounds. If you want to save more money, say you want to save a thousand dollars. Make sure the goal is relevant. So that's the reason why it's important to conduct a life audit because when you conduct a life audit, you will see, is this relevant? relevant for my life? Is this relevant for my big picture goal? Is this relevant for who I want to be in this world? Because if you are losing five pounds and you don't even think that you want to become a more fit person, you feel like you're at a good weight. What is the relevancy? So you want to make sure that this is actually relevant and you're not doing things for no reason. You're doing this because it's going to add to your life. And finally, we're going to make this goal time-based. So that is the reason why it is a month challenge because a time-based challenge is you have a specific time as to when the goal should be achieved and when it should be completed. And this is why I love the one month challenge because every single week you know that you are inching closer and closer to the end of a month. So it's easily measurable through time and it also increases your motivation. If you don't have gratitude, you're not going to be able to manifest anything in your life. I promise you. You have to have gratitude for every stage of your life and you have to have empathy for all the past versions of yourself. For each day of this month, I want you to have a gratitude journal and I want you to write on it every single day. Write down one thing every single day that you're grateful for. This practice helps you shift your perspective from being negative, insulting yourself, insulting other people, just having a negative thought frame into a more positive one, one with more gratitude, one with more positivity. This is going to help you become a way more optimistic person. Also express gratitude to other people. Let your friends know that you love them. Let your friends know that you're thankful for them and you're grateful to have them in your life, that you're glad that they support your one month challenge journey. Always reflect and appreciate what you have going on because not only can things be a lot worse, but things will get a lot better for you. And to get to that next stage in your life, you need to be grateful for what you currently have, but you also need to be grateful for what's coming your way. If you enjoyed this video, I have an entire playlist on advice on how to glow up, on how to become your best self. So if you like this video, you are definitely going to enjoy that playlist. Thank you so much for watching this video. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!